everyone. Today's video comes from Kent Hoven. Kent Hoven is a very poor scientist and he's a very bad representation of Christianity. Nobody should actually listen to anything he says, which is why I didn't link today's video in the description. Let's see what he has to say. Astronomers can see a star blow up about every 30 years. I have the feeling this will be the very last time we ever hear Mr. Hoven say something truthful. And they're looking out there with their telescope and say, oh wow, there's a new one. A star exploded. It's called a nova, or if it's a big one, they call it a supernova. Okay, so he said two things that are correct. I'm still waiting. He's going to say something completely ignorant and not right. Uh, <clears throat> nova in Spanish means no go. Yeah, Kent, no it doesn't. I'm not going to call you Dr. Kent because you don't actually have a doctorate. You bought one. The word in Spanish for doesn't go is no va. That's two words. Nova, you said it yourself. It means new. It's Latin. By the way, the Chevy Nova did not sell very well in Mexico for that reason. The Chevy Nova actually sold quite well in Mexico. That's an urban legend. Stars blow up every 30 years. Well, they've searched the heavens with these telescopes looking for how many supernova rings are there. They call it a dead star. Or they can find less than 300. Well, number one, I don't think the Institute for Creation Research is a valid place to get authentic scientific knowledge. But I don't know where they're getting this 300 from because even by 1998, much more than 300 supernovas have been discovered. Now, wait a minute. If there are less than 300 supernova rings and one happens every 30 years, you can do the math. I mean, that's about 9,000 years. When you have faulty data that's been completely made up to start with, then your math is probably going to be wrong also. The Earth is not 6,000 years old, it's not less than 10,000 years old, it's 4.5 billion years old, and the universe is about 13.5 billion years old. If the universe is billions of years old, there ought to be a whole lot more supernova rings out there. Actually, by observing the entire known galaxy, scientists have discovered around 10,000 supernovas. So using your bad math, that means the universe should be around 300,000 years old. You might notice that number is a bit larger than six. Why are there less than 300 supernova rings? I think the correct answer is there's not, and you're making things up. Because that's what you like to do. You like to lie and make things up. Uh, because it's less than 10,000 years old? Until a young Earth creationist comes to this conclusion without first reading Genesis, I'm not even going to entertain the idea that the universe is only 10,000 years old. There is zero scientific evidence that this is true. Boy, they don't like that answer at all. Yes, in general, people don't like being lied to, and people that understand science don't like bad science. And that's what your science is. It's very poorly thought out bad science. But that's the logical conclusion. Yeah, logic and Kent Hoven are not two words I will ever use in the same sentence. Nothing that you have said so far has been logical. It's all been lies and made up things. If stars are blowing up every 30 years, we would have to have at least one star born every 30 years just to keep the balance. Stars aren't born, they form, and that process is quite long. It takes about 10 million years. And also, I'm not really sure where you're going with this, because you might realize that space is really, really big, and we can't look everywhere at once all at the same time. I mean, countries that have a population problem because they're getting less births and deaths, you know, like Germany, more people are dying than being born. If, if you, you are, are at all familiar with, with Kent Hovind, then, then you, you would know, know that, that he likes, likes to take two completely unrelated things, put them together, and make, make it look like he actually made a point, point when in reality he really just keeps, keeps rambling and sounds quite unintelligent. Oh, well, eventually that's going to create a problem. Stars should have to be born. Nobody's ever seen one star form, not one. I'm, I'm assuming, assuming from, from the fact that Kent looks quite young that this talk was given long before the James Webb Space Telescope. And if you're not familiar with what that is, it's a telescope that was launched recently that allows scientists to photograph the universe in ways that the Hubble Space Telescope can. And the James Webb Space Telescope actually has photographed areas that they believe show the formation of stars. But again, it takes on average about 10 million years for a star to form. It's not like we're going to see it happening all of the time and be able to capture it in an area of space that's so big. We see them blow up all the time. They've never seen a star form, and I'll cover that in a second. Well, I wouldn't really say every 30 to 50 years all the time. And 
Only three supernovas so far have been directly observed without a telescope. It takes quite a lot to find these things. Its last estimate by Hubble Telescope was that there are 70 sextillion stars. They say the universe is 20 billion years old, but well, you can do the math. Well, Kent Hovind has stated something factual, he hasn't told the entire truth. You'll notice by looking at the bottom of the clipped article that at one point they thought the universe was between 7 and 20 billion years. Kent Hovind has picked the highest number to try to make his point seem stronger without letting people know that it was an actually a range of time because at the time they were measuring the universe when this video came out, the measurement was not very accurate. That means six and a half million stars would have to form every minute. I don't know why you think that's what it means because that just means that's how many stars we have. And remember, stars don't just instantaneously appear out of nowhere. They form over long periods of time. So over long periods of time, that's how many stars have formed up until the present day. And there's possible that there's much more stars out there. We just can't see them because the light is so far away that it will never reach us. We'd have to have six and a half million stars forming every minute for 20 billion years. And I just double checked. I might have said 13 and a half. They're actually estimating about 13.8 billion years for the age of the universe. And all it means is that that many stars would have had to have formed, not appeared out of nowhere, formed over a long gradual process. It's not that hard to figure out, Mr. Kent. To make the stars that we know about. It doesn't count the ones we don't know about because we can't see them yet. Well, he can acknowledge that fact, but he can't figure any of the other things out correctly. Really don't know what's going on here. Who knows how many stars are out there? Sometimes the textbooks will say, well, there are new stars being constantly born in clouds of gas and dust. This is so stupid. How a physics textbook can teach this, I don't know. I would say it's about as dumb as teaching every kid that the Earth is only 6,000 years old when there's zero scientific evidence for it. Anybody that knows freshman physics knows when you try to squeeze gases together, it pressure builds up, temperature builds up, and it drives them back apart. It's called Boyle's Gas Law. Well, the nice thing about modern times is we have the internet to look up facts. And this is what I found. Boyle's law assumes constant temperature in a closed system, which star formation is not. Boyle's law and related gas laws apply only to ideal gases and assume no interaction between gas particles. Therefore, these gas laws are violated frequently by real gases, which do experience attractive and repulsive interactions. Your friend's argument is based on naive understandings of physics and is fundamentally flawed. Nobody has ever seen dust collapsing into a solid. It would take such incredible pressure to do that. It's called gravity. You know the thing that lets you stay on Earth's surface and continue spouting scientific nonsense? I, I was in a debate one time and this professor, I asked him, I said, how can you get dust to collapse into a, into a solid? He said, well, we calculated that if 20 stars explode near each other, it'll produce enough pressure to make a brand new star. I said, now that's brilliant. You got to lose 20 to gain one. Hmm? <laughs> it's not going to get a universe full of stars if you got to lose 20 to gain one. And even that is only theoretical. It's never been observed, okay? Ken Hovind and people like him are really good at just dismissing things, dismissing evidence, but never offering up anything to counteract it. They just say, nobody ever saw it. It never got observed in a lab. I was in Alamogordo, New Mexico, and they've got a science center down there, and they showed these pictures of star babies. They said, oh, this is a new star forming. No, sir, it's a bright spot, okay? The other thing they enjoy doing is quote mining out of articles that are at least 10 years older than the time that they're giving the talk. One guy in Science Magazine admitted, the silent embarrassment of modern astrophysics is, we do not know how even a single one of these stars managed to form. The Hubble Space Telescope wasn't launched until five years after that quote was said. Looking through the Earth's atmosphere with ground-based telescopes, it's really difficult to see really far away. And if we want to observe stars being formed, we're going to need to look far away. Who knows, maybe stars aren't forming anymore. But that being said, we now have the James Webb Space Telescope and the Hubble Space Telescope, which can peer far away into faraway galaxies and observe things like star formation clouds. 
You can look up a picture, Mr. Kent. Nobody knows how stars can form from dust clouds. No one has unambiguously observed material falling into an embryonic star, which should be happening if the star is truly still forming. And no one has caught a molecular cloud in the act of collapsing. Precisely how a section of interstellar cloud collapses gravitationally into a star, a double or multiple star, or a solar system is still a challenging theoretical problem. Astronomers have yet to find an interstellar cloud in the actual process of collapse. The problem is Kent Hovind has such a crazy definition of what science actually is. He doesn't seem to understand. Science is about investigating things we don't know about, and then gathering evidence and making observations and theories and trying to prove the theory is completely true, or at least true enough to be accepted, and then investigating new things. Science doesn't have to have everything figured out 100% in order to have a general understanding of what happened. The origin of stars represents one of the most fundamental unsolved problems of contemporary physics. This guy said no one really understands how star formation proceeds. It's really remarkable. Nobody knows how this happens. So if they tell you new stars are forming, you tell them Kent Hovind said they're confused or they're lying. I would rather tell people that you're confused than lying because that's what you spent the last 20 to 30, 40 years of your life doing being confused about how anything works and lying to people to make them believe what you believe. Because nobody knows how it happens. There's not even a good theory how you could squeeze dust into a star, not e and there's certainly no evidence. Well, the, the fact, fact is the universe is incredibly anciently old, and stars came from somewhere. And the current theory actually is quite a good one, that large clouds of gas collapsed to form stars, which then exploded. And that material went out and made new stars and made planets and made other materials. They see bright spots appear in the clouds. Or not in the clouds, in the star, uh, dust clouds in space. They look at this crab nebula or eagle nebula and they're staring at it. And all of a sudden one day a spot gets a little brighter. Oh wow, a star is being born. That's immediately their conclusion, that a star is being born. I say, wait, wait, wait. Maybe the dust in front of it is clearing and the star was already there. If you have a better theory, which doesn't involve reading the Bible, which, while I do believe the Bible, I don't believe the Bible is a science book or is ever intended to teach science. If you do have a well-thought-out scientific theory that could be peer-reviewed by other scientists and accepted as true, I would love to hear it. But I know you don't because all you ever do is say this is wrong without ever sh telling people what you think is right scientifically. Maybe it's a star blowing up. Maybe it's another supernova. Because that's what happens when stars supernova, they get really bright. They don't know that a star is forming. So don't let them tell you that we've seen stars form. Nobody has seen such a thing. Why do you continue to embarrass yourself, Kent, with your complete and utter lack of scientific knowledge? All we do is we see them blow up, which is the opposite of what evolutionists need. Evolution studies how biological life changes over time, not stars. Cosmologists and astronomers and astrophysicists they study how stars in the universe changes. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, Let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and he made the stars also. Well, I do admit that stars were created by God. We differ on the way they were created. You believe that God spoke every star in existence into existence with his voice over a period of one literal 24-hour day. So what you actually mean is that there are no theories that agree with your narrow interpretation of an ancient book written by ancient people. Here God is claiming he made the stars and it says in Psalm he counts the number of the stars. I'm not really sure how God is good at math means the Big Bang didn't happen. I mean you would think God would need to know a lot of math in order for the Big Bang to happen. Not only how many there are total but each one has its own number. So God will say oh this is star number 42 trillion you know 718 billion. He, he, he knows the number of each one. So Kent once again decides to ramble about things that actually have no point and aren't doing anything to prove that the Big Bang is not true. And yes, everyone, that's actually the end of his talk. I did not cut off the end of his talk. He thinks that everything he said has proved the Big Bang is not actually true. In my opinion, he's just mumbled a bunch of nonsense and then decided he won without actually showing why the Big Bang isn't true or why the Bible says it's not true. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And off to your right, there's a couple more you can watch. Thank you.